Okay, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm John Curran. I'm the President and CEO of the American Registry for Internet Numbers, and that's Aaron. And uh, Aaron is the responsible for IP address administration and issuance from North America uh, and the Caribbean areas. We're responsible for making sure that all of the companies here at the show can get IP addresses, IPv4 and IPv6. So tell us about IPv6. There's been a lot of discussion that uh, it's coming at some point. We're going to run out of IPv4 numbers. Give us the big picture about uh, what the, the change will mean and uh, uh, and what folks might have to do to, to prepare for it. Sure, absolutely. So we've been talking about IPv4 for years because IPv4 has been with us for 20 plus years. About 10 years ago, uh, actually 15 years in total, the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, the group that developed the protocols that we use for the Internet, realized that IPv4 wasn't going to last long enough. They realized that in about 15 or 20 years, we're going to run out of IPv4 addresses, the addresses that we know every day, like 192, 68, you know, dot, 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 or four quad addresses, as we call them. The fact of the matter is that we've been planning now for 10 years on how to solve that problem. People have heard about IPv6. In some ways, they've heard too much about it because we've been ready for too long. But that's good, just good preparation. All of your major equipment manufacturers, your Cisco, your Juniper, all of them support IPv6 technology and routing. All of the major backbones are working on IPv6. We're now getting to the edge of the network. We're getting to where content's hosted, a show like HostingCon. We're getting to where your web servers and your firewalls are working. And IPv6, what it is, is an internet protocol with a bigger address. And that internet protocol with a bigger address, unfortunately, by definition, can't be compatible with V4. Your V4 hosts only know how to receive V4, and they only will know. So we have to layer V6 on top of all of your hosts, all your public-facing servers, so that when we run out of V4 addresses, we can use IPv6 to connect customers to the internet, and they can still get to all of the content. So, from an infrastructure perspective, uh, what's required? to then layer, do that layering of IPv6 and, uh, and how do folks go about it? Most organizations already have what they need to do IPv6. As I said, your routers, your firewalls probably already support it today, but your software, your infrastructure, even if your web servers support IPv4 and IPv6, you probably have tools for billing, you probably have tools for provisioning, that may or may not support IPv6. So a big part of this is making sure that your vendors have IPv6 support in the tools that you use to run your business. The basic protocols, the basic web serving and routing are all in your, are all in your servers today. Microsoft supports v6, Apple supports v6, Linux supports v6. It's the management tools above that where vendors are just now adding IPv6 support to their products. So is, is this an issue for enterprise data centers who have applications as well? Well, if an enterprise data center wants to make an application available to the public internet, it's going to realize in about two years that public internet is going to be v4 and v6. So if you're an, if you're an enterprise data center, and you're serving applications to the general public, you're going to have to also have IPv6 connectivity. So what will the transition look like? When? What's the estimate on when uh, we'll run out of IPv4 numbers? And, you know, is it Tra like flip, flip the switch? Transitions started uh, already. Yeah. Many websites already have IPv6 addresses. Many mail servers have IPv6 addresses. It's something you can do right now. Now, here's the real question. When does it become essential? When does the first site get connected that can only connect to V4 websites and V4 email, uh, V6 uh, websites and V6 email? That's a good question. Probably two to three years. At the current rate of usage, the ISP and hosting community, Aaron will stop being able to give out IPv4 blocks or addresses in about two years, and everyone will go through their internal reserves in another year after that, so we're going to end up with V6 only hosts and V6 only customers starting in about three years time. That seems like a lot of time, but when you realize what you need to do, it's far easier to start now and make it part of your normal investment plans 
and do because it's very cost effective to do. Make sure it's part of your vendor purchases. Make sure it's part of your equipment purchases. Make sure it's part of your provisioning plans than it is to have a crash project two and a half years from now to get right. ready. What's your assessment of the understanding of what needs to be done and the level of readiness and awareness? Oh, well, in the, in the organizations that have the most work to do, which is the major backbones, the major internet service provider backbones that are across the country and the globe, almost all of them have major projects underway right now. And there's a high level of understanding because they have an understanding because it's such critical resource to their business is the ability to continue to grow their internet infrastructure. Moving down now to enterprise web hosting organizations, that's only just now beginning. They're being driven by the customers, and there haven't been a lot of customers expressing demand for V6 because it's not a customer problem. It's an infrastructure right. problem. So it's only the people who are planning ahead who are asking. But we're beginning to see it. People are beginning to realize they can put V6 on in addition to V4 in preparation. That's beginning to drive demand for hosting. It's beginning to drive demand. You have some of the major content companies, example, Google, has taken the majority of their services and enabled them with IPv6, well ahead of demand. Acts like that and other major enterprise organizations enabling their applications for v6 are causing other people to realize they have to get their initiative going. Does this become a competitive differentiator at some point? It actually is today, particularly for this crowd. Right now, early adopters are looking for v6 and v4. They're looking for ISPs that run v6 and IPv4. They're looking for organizations that can host their content with v6 and IPv4. Right now, not a lot of companies in the hosting space can run v6 and v4. So, it's a unique niche. If you are v6 enabled ahead of your competitors, you're going to be on the front of a demand wave. Now, it's not often you know of a wave that's going to go to 100% demand in three years and you have such insight into it now. Right. So it is an opportunity, actually, a competitive opportunity to get customers if you want to be on the, on the front edge of it. So is it just the most sophisticated customers who are asking now? At what point does this become an issue for it's, the it's, larger customer base that many of these hosts are going to be dealing with? It's very, very much the sophisticated customers, very much the network-oriented, the very network-aware customers, but it's going to move to more general. We now have the federal government looking at v6 enabling all the federal websites which will cause both data center and hosting implications for many organizations you now have uh, smaller organizations realizing that they want to get the v6 as part of their normal upgrade path so probably six months to a year you'll begin seeing it move to uh, a bigger as people someone would say a, a, a bigger area of the adoption curve um, but it is coming very quickly so if uh, some of our readers want to uh, learn more about this and figure out what steps they need to take. There's a number of resources. Aaron has um, a Get IPv6 uh, website, which is www.getipv6.info. You can also go to, um, uh, you can also go online. Google will give you hundreds of resources, for example, on IPv6. Our website contains pointers to ad uh, adoption trends, um, how to upgrade ISPs that support IPv6. So it's a great, great place to start. And that's IRN, ARIN. If you go to www.arin.net and you click on the Get IPv6 Wiki page, you'll go directly to it. It's a wiki allowing people to update it. We're not the only ones updating it. The community is updating that as better resources come along. Okay, thanks for taking time today to talk with us about this. Thank you, Rich.